Okay. So before our speaker, Jerry Jin, takes center stage, we have a brief summary of his background and career to give you. Jerry Jin has spent more than 50 years in the pharmaceutical, diagnostic, laboratory medicine, and biotechnology industries. His passionate interests have been in the areas of mind being, consciousness, and the nature of reality. Jerry is chairman and CEO of the Foundation for Mind Being Research. And he's the author of two books, The Seeker and The Teacher of Light and Science, Subtle Energy, oh, excuse me, I think I, let me say it again. The Seeker and The Teacher of Light and Science, Subtle Energies and Spirituality, A Path to I Am. So, we're pleased to introduce Jerry Jin to you this evening. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. I appreciate being here and I appreciate meeting uh, everyone in this group. And hopefully uh, you'll get a lot of interesting information from, from this evening. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and share the screen. Let me click that. And uh, turn on my... PowerPoint. There. Hide this thing over here. <clears throat> this is the title of the uh, second book that I've published, uh, Science, Subtle Energies, and Spirituality. So thank you, Susan, for uh, introducing uh, that. And that's a picture of the first book, The Seeker and the Teacher of Light. And I won't repeat any of this since uh, everyone has heard Susan say it now, although there is my book uh, website uh, there. And uh, and the FMBR Foundation for Mind Being Research has a website. And we do give talks uh, a number of times a month that you can, if you go to that site, uh, they're subject matters that uh, are very related to the areas of interest for this group. Uh, they're a very of interest for, for me, and I figured that uh, these subject matters are what gets you excited with regard to the Theosophical Society. Another person I'll introduce is what Joachim Whippet. He's the teacher of light that the, the first book talks about. And he's an intuitive uh, healer and a dowser, but he's really a very enlightened soul. And uh, the book explains who he really is and who we all really are. And I'll get much into this area as we progress. Uh, scope of the presentation today, I will be talking about subtle vibrational energies and how to detect it, how to measure it. Um, and these energies are everywhere. And by the time I'm through with my discussions, you'll hopefully understand that everything has these energies uh, and that these energies listen to you. You can uh, invite it to do things uh, and it will do these things. And by so doing, you'll learn to understand who you really are, uh, that you are in fact the I am uh, essence. But this will all come as, as I go through this discussion. And uh, let's see, I don't know if you see the top portion of the slide, there, there's a, I don't know if I can hide that or not. But um, let me just say that vibrational energies are everywhere and in order to understand vibrational energies and how to measure it and what it can do, I have to go through a whole series of definitions. Uh, and these definitions have to do with uh, ways to detect these energies, which uses the tools of radiesthesia and the tools of biogeometry. Uh, and some of the new energies that I've discovered, 369. 
So go through, I'll go through those at the beginning. I'll define the vibrational uh, spectrum and you'll see why. Now I have some slides to, uh, going through discussing that aspect also. And all these things are just necessary. Otherwise, if I jump in to talk about subtle energies, it's a uh, subject matter that will be too esoteric. But if I lay the background out before you, uh, you'll understand it. And I'll go through and talk about the creation principles because I need to do that because some of these energies are related to the creation principles, especially the 369 energies. And we'll be talking about uh, the torus and the vortex, about the cycles of creation and decay, the spins that are there uh, that you'll see everywhere. Once you get into this, you'll see clockwise and counterclockwise spins everywhere. And we'll get into the subject matter of the fourth state of matter. And that's important because you have to understand once you understand that, you'll see where some of these spins come from, and that that is, in fact, the nature of matter. And these uh, biogeometry articles and the uh, fourth states of matter all create fields, and we'll show how these fields form and how they create the energies of harmony or fields of harmony. And you'll see where magnetism comes into play. And with that as the background, then I can delve into uh, the I am energy levels. And these vibrational energies, or you'd say these subtle energies, are there. And uh, you can then de start detecting your own vibrational energies. And you'll see what happens when you detect it and you state a few affirmations and you watch the pendulum starts swinging uh, very rapidly, and you, and then that you know for, that that is who you are. And with these affirmations, you can reach that center of stillness that you achieve in meditation. Meditation it takes maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, 20 minutes uh, to reach that center of stillness. With affirmations, you can reach that within minutes, and you'll see that. And then you'll we'll talk about your abilities because with the subtle energies, you'll be able to do things. You'll be able to harmonize things. You'll be able to move energies. You'll be able to copy them. You can use them for healing purposes. And there are special I am energies that I'll introduce you to also. And we'll talk a little bit about other, your other abilities, such as remote viewing, spoon bending, random number generator, influencing, things of that nature. But all that will lead you to uh, who you really are and, and your I am, your essence, and your oneness with uh, everything. Okay, what does science see today? You have the electromagnetic spectrum, and we've all seen this. You know, everyone knows what that is. Uh, you know, you see colors, and that's in the visible spectrum, around 900 to 300 uh, nanometers. And you know, everyone knows about gamma rays and X rays and ultraviolet rays, and then the electromagnetic spectrums, the fields that get formed in the microwave areas, and the much longer ones in the radio wave uh, arena. And you know about frequency and cycles per second uh, that these uh, energies will vibrate in. So that's what science looks at today. But there's another spectrum in the subtle energy world. And the pioneers in this the area discovered that uh, these subtle energies are, can be associated with colors. So here you have the spectrum of colors and some non-colors, like you have negative green in there at the bottom of the circle, but you have the blacks and the whites, which uh, sometimes people may or may not consider them colors, but they're all part of the spectrum. And I'll go through how the spectrum is derived in another slide. But it is through these vibrational spectrum 
uh, let's say colors or energies uh, that you can help uh, structure the subtle energies. And each color, you think about the 12 colors in the circle here, where there are subbands of that. There are 140, each band has 12, so there's 144 subbands. And some of these energies are beneficial, and some of these energies are harmful. So typically, vertical energies are harmful for humans, and horizontal energies are beneficial. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, or we're going to ask more about it later. But these energies are everywhere. Um, they're within us, and we'll go through exercises that will talk about the vibrational energy of, of yourself. So you can figure out your personal wavelength, and we'll talk about personal wavelength a little bit more. And all matter has these energies plants, animals, colors, electromagnetic fields, angles, sounds, units, sense, etc. have this, um, have vibrational energies associated with them and they're subtle, but you can't detect them. And we will talk about how that is done. These energies are everywhere and you do connect with them. And I will talk about that. And, uh, and when you're in resonance with uh, an energy and your pendulum goes clockwise, that is something that is positive for you. And if something is negative for you, the pendulum goes counterclockwise. And you're connecting it with it through the wavelength of the pendulums. And slides will be describing that aspect of it. And there are energies that we'll talk about uh, called BG3, standing for biogeometry three, that are energies associated with harmony. It's a centering energy and wherever there's harmony, you'll find this energy. And we'll, we'll define that in a few minutes. But all these things are present all the time. And even the, the concepts of entropy and negentropy are related to the spins of the pendulum. How do you measure these energies? And uh, it's not rocket science, it's resonance. It's something that you've heard about and know about, and you know about it through tuning forks. You strike a tuning fork, and all tuning forks that are octaves above or below will vibrate ad infinitum. So if you're tuning into a subtle vibrational energy, that's what you're doing. You're looking at it through its resonance. And you do it through also instead of tuning forks. If you have a stringed instrument, here we have a monochord. You pluck the string that's held together by two uh, uh, areas that are held, that are constant, and the string vibrates. And all strings of monochords that are above and below it in terms of different octaves will vibrate. And that, in essence, is the basis of how you detect subtle energies. But you detect it through an instrument. The instrument is you, but you use another instrument, uh, a tool, and that's the pendulum. And in this slide, the string length in the monochord between the two fixed points, uh, that length of string determines that note or what that note uh, or that oct the octaves will be. There will be multiples of that uh, W st string, le string length. The same is true with regard to a pendulum. You have your finger at one end and a weight at the other end. So those are the two fixed points. So the string length is really what allows you to come into resonance with the subtle energies. You are the tool, or you are the detector, but the tool is there that will enable all this to happen. And this is not unusual. In quantum physics, the observer is part of the experiment. 
And the observer determines what uh, the results will be in a certain sense, whether it's a particle or a wave. In remote viewing, and Russell Targ's work has proven this uh, phenomenon definitively, the person is the uh, viewer, so it's still the person. And in detecting vibrational energies, you are the person detecting the vibrational energies. You may not know it consciously, but you are doing so. And you do this through a field called radiesthesia. It's an old field. And if you really look at the works of the Egyptians and beyond, it's really, really old, but the French brought this field back into play. And much of what is done in terms of what the ancients did is through use of uh, the field of radiesthesia. They didn't call it that. And in radiesthesia, you'll learn something called a personal wavelength, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. And this determines the wavelength of you. And by knowing your wavelength and knowing what's in tune with you, you can know what is good and what is bad for you. If it's something that's not in tune with you, it's not good for you. This will apply to food, supplement, mineral, essential oils, etc. Dowsing works, uh, but instead of talking about it through the typical uh, mechanisms of mental dowsing, I'll use the field of radiesthesia to describe what, I'm, um, what we're doing in, in this discussion, because we're really looking at the resonant of subtle energies. And you do this through what's called a neutral pendulum. And I've made one pendulum out of dough and salt, of flour and salt, um, and another one uh, that can be bought uh, in different places, just an acrylic, one inch acrylic ball. So this is, these are one inch diameter. And you can use wood too. Um, and uh, neutral, it's neutral because you don't want to be in resonance with uh, the materials that you're trying to detect. Uh, so the wood isn't strictly neutral, uh, but it, uh, it'll serve its purposes. The dough isn't strictly neutral, but no, nothing is strictly so, but it's close enough for the work that we're doing. And we'll learn to quantitate these energies, uh, and I'll give numbers associated with these energies uh, and the strength of these energies. And that's because if you have a, a circle for a where you place a witness, that you're trying to measure. The 90 degree angle is a blocking vehicle to block these energies. And you can create scales and you can have a scale that is uh, uh, common for everybody. And therefore, if you have more energy, the energy will go be further in terms of the scale. And that's how you get a, a relative number for, for the uh, amount of energy. How do we do this and how do we, how does radiesthesia truly work? Uh, well, it's us and we have a right brain and a left brain, or you can say we have a subconscious and a conscious mind. And we've all heard that the subconscious mind or the right brain has a lot of information that uh, the left brain doesn't uh, uh, know about. The left brain sort of concentrates on what you can see, feel, and uh, touch and hear, and it works from that. But the, the information is there, and uh, some of that information does leak through into the left brain. And so we have our intuitions and you know, we have our synchronicities, etc. And so the pendulum is a focusing device. Once you teach a pendulum to be able to, to make, uh, to go counterclockwise and clockwise and back and forth, uh, that's about all you need to, to teach the pendulum to do and to teach your muscles to, to do. After that, you let the uh, uh, right brain dictate what happens. So you get your mind out of it and you get uh, the pendulum to just move to and fro. And then basically what happens is that the pendulum will go clockwise or counterclockwise what, since uh, you've already taught that pendulum how to do such things, 
it's like walking or riding a bike. Uh, you don't think about, oh, I'm going to walk. I have to take my, put my right foot in front of my left foot. It goes, it does its thing. It's no longer part of the conscious mind doing it. It does its thing. The same with the pendulum. Once you've, once you've instructed it and it knows what to do, this point just sort of restates uh, some of the same things uh, that I talked about, except that once you learn to use these pendulums, you can, there's all sorts of techniques, especially in biogeometry that, and in the field of radiesthesia, you can get information, not just from the physical side, but your emotional bodies, mental, spiritual, uh, areas and you can certain rulers that you can use to access these other areas and you can have anatomy charts and have pointers and you can locate where problems are uh, all on an unconscious uh, basis. So the fields of biogeometry is, uh, uh, is a lot of information that you can learn and these courses are taught and many thousands of folks know this field and the field is, is progressing, and the field of radiesthesia is progressing. Uh, hmm. Okay, yeah, when things are good for you, the motion is clockwise in the pendulum. If, if that is the direction of resonance, um, and the direction of, of not in resonance is counterclockwise, and it's all done without thinking. You just get the pendulum to go, move to and fro, and then the pendulum will go clockwise or not counterclockwise, depending upon the energies of what you're now aware of. You're not thinking about it. So you're not doing anything mentally saying that, ah, oh, I'm thinking about this thing and it should go clockwise. No, you're just uh, getting to and fro motion and uh, allowing the energy to flow through you. And you have to do certain things if the energies aren't flowing through you. And in, Bauge, in, in the teachings of Joaquin Whippage and in my book, uh, The Secret of the Teacher of Light, uh, you, there's things that you do to bring yourself into harmony. And you do that by bringing your right brain and left brain together uh, with your heart. Uh, and, and by so doing, things happen in the right way. Here's just a picture of what you do to find your personal wavelength. You hold the, um, the pendulum close to where the pendulum ball is. Then you slowly move the, your, slip your fingers up on the string and you initiate a to and fro motion. And, at, and this is done above your, uh, the back of your hand. And at some point, the pendulum will go clockwise and that's because it's now in resonance with you. And if you continue slipping your fingers up higher, the motion will cease. And then at twice that length, it'll go clockwise again. And this is usually around an inch and a half to two inches uh, away from the ball. But that's all it is. It's just allowing things to happen. And you do this with, a, if you put a, uh, if you make a pendulum out of little, uh, centrifuge tube um, and you put an aspirin in it the, the, the uh, tube will go clockwise when there's aspirin present same with water put water in a tube and anytime there's water it'll go clockwise and that's how dowsers find water so how do dowsers find water well you're mostly water so you're in tune with your, the water that's in you and you're coming into resonance with the water underneath the ground that's all it is so you are special. You have all these abilities. You just don't utilize these uh, abilities. Same with the color. Uh, you just slip your finger up uh, along a string on the, on the uh, pendulum and you're aware of the red color and that's all you are, just aware of the red color and that's what you're focusing on. That's not doing anything anymore. And at the string length that uh, you're in resonance with the color red, the, the pendulum goes clockwise. Okay, this, this slide talks about... Uh, oh, I don't understand that. Oh, you don't understand that other, the previous slide? No. Okay, oh, sorry. Me. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, what you do is uh, you have a, a pendulum, a neutral pendulum, and uh, you're just gonna move your fingers up the string and you're gonna let the string, you're gonna let the, the pendulum just go to, you're gonna initiate a motion, to and fro motion. Not a circular motion, just a to and fro motion. And as you initiate that motion, and you slip your finger up the string. Remember, the string length is a wavelength where it'll be in resonance with the color red. So you're looking at the wavelength to be in resonance with red. And at a certain string length, the pendulum will go clockwise because now you're in resonance with the color red. Go further than this, then you're no longer in resonance. The string length is no longer in resonance with it. And uh, it'll just, the pendulum will just go to and fro. It will no longer go clockwise. Is that clear? <laughs> uh, I'll go through it later on again, if, if not, uh, in the question and answer. But that, that's, that's how you determine subtle energies and be able to detect subtle energies which is really at the heart of what I'm talking about today. Because it's these energies that are the basis of virtually everything that is around you, except that you don't realize that, that everything has these energies associated with it. You are in my vibrational resonance. Even when you look, if a guy looks at a woman across the street, and the woman knows that and just turns around, she may not know that, the resonance of you as the male looking at the female and the female knowing that someone's looking at you is resonance. And that is what, that is what you are feeling. So your subconscious tells for the female to turn around and look because someone is staring at you. So it's the same principle, exactly the same. Except the pendulum here is looking at the wavelength of that uh, energy. So now that you know how to measure the, uh, the wavelength of the color red, where did this vibrational spectrum come from? If you have a sphere, bring that sphere outside. Let the sun shine on that sphere. And if you've calibrated a pendulum to the color green, piece of paper, brass, whatever, green. And you'll find that green is on the portion where the sun shines on it directly. The color red is on one side and the violet is on the other side. And clear on the other side of the sphere, uh, the pendulum will vibrate, vibrate on something called negative green, which is not really a color but it's, it's another energy that uh, one can uh, have. If you have a circle now, take go inside or draw a circle in the dirt. And if you're lost and you don't have a compass, but you have a weight and a string, and you tie that weight to the string and uh, you get the resonant wavelength of green and you, Dows the circle at the north point of the circle is green. You'll be resonance with the green. If you have something like a red flower or whatever outdoors, you find that wavelength. And with that, uh, you find we're in the circle, uh, you'll have resonance with the color red and you'll have west. And from that, you have northwest, south, and east. And that's how the uh, the vibrational spectrum was uh, determined. Okay, next I'm going to go into another definition, uh, and that definition is the is biogeometry. It's a field of study. It's not sacred geometry. It's biogeometry. It's a, a word coined by Ibrahim Karim, the founder of this. And there are virtually thousands upon thousands of people. Uh, who know biogeometry, it's a very useful tool. And the tool allows you to, it's a science. 
and it's a science of establishing harmony between biological fields and their environment. And you use all sorts of ways of doing so. You use design, color, form, motion, sound. It almost doesn't matter. You're, you're creating resonance with something called harmony. And you may not have ever thought of harmony as a vibration, but it, there is a harmony. There's a center, centering principle. Center of a circle has harmony. So a center of a circle has this energy of harmony. <coughs> and this harmony energy is called BG3, standing for biogeometry three. And it has three characteristics to that energy. It has a penetrating power called horizontal negative green. It has uh, energy of ultraviolet. And these are harmonics of, of ultraviolet. It's not really uh, the color for ultraviolet. It's a harmonic of it. That is, it's an octave of it somewhere up or down uh, the octave scale. And it's a harmonic of gold. And again, it's not gold. It's in, in terms of measuring, you use the color orange to uh, come to the uh, harmonic of gold. But it's not the three separate energies. It's a single energy, uh, the quality. You can have these three energies together and under separate conditions and it's not going to produce harmony. So it's a one quality that has these three characteristics that produces harmony. And harmony is important. When you have harmony, healing occurs much more readily. A person's heal themselves, but if they are in harmony and the harmony is there, healing occurs much more readily. So it's a, it's a system of being in balance. And there are special pendulums that uh, measure this. These are pendulums that Ibrahim devised called the BG-16 and I-Cup. I won't go into how it's designed or anything else, uh, but it'll measure, it'll go into resonance. It will go clockwise whenever harmony is present. And that's all you need to know for this discussion today and different things will result in this. And we'll talk about some of these things, but these pendulums will go, will be specifically in resonance uh, when harmony is present. And how do you know that this is, what I'm saying is real? Ibrahim did a lot of work in this area. And uh, example, uh, EMF, electromagnetic fields, they cause hypersensitivity and people who are sensitive to it uh, don't get nauseated, they'll have migraines, etc. They cannot be around EMF. And so in Switzerland, in the towns of Hamburg and the towns of Hirschberg, they're small towns, people became hypersensitive and complained to the government and therefore uh, uh, the people invited Ibrahim in and said, can you take care of this problem. And he did. He created uh, the Hamburg emitter to direct it at these uh, cell towers. And he created uh, tools that could be in person people's homes that uh, will build to harmonize the energies of EMF. And he harmonized the whole town. Uh, and that's very well documented. I won't go through documentation because that's not the purpose of my discussion today. Hepatitis, oh, how can it affect a person? Well, you can be in resonance with the liver and you can measure enzymes that are in resonance, that, are, uh, that detect uh, if there's problems with the liver and you give the liver BG3 energies. So in a national study in which all the different drugs that were used in uh, the West and the East were studied, what did the best, got the best results were from using biogeometry and using 
what are called biosignatures, which are pendants that Ibrahim devised to be in resonance with the liver in the harmony of the BG3. And there are many tools. I won't go through all the tools that are there, but uh, biogeometry has tools that will, will do this. And here are just pictures of it. There's a pendant with different types of, 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 sig of uh, bowel signatures on them. And these bowel signatures can be in resonance with uh, different organs in the body. And uh, there's cubes with, that, give, that will uh, uh, have the BG3 energies. The Hamburg emitter is there. You have cell phone harmonization. So these are just things that are there. <clears throat> <coughs> okay, um, now we're going to jump to a slightly different subject, energies of creation, because this will allow you to understand a new energy and understand the basis of the creation of energy and understand who you are, because eventually we're going to come back to I am who you are. <coughs> And so uh, in this section, I'll introduce the concept of the 369 energies. And I'm sure many of you have heard the quote from Tesla. Uh, if you only knew the magnificence of 369, then you would have the key to the universe. What did he mean? It's involved with the Taurus shape. And uh, what I did was that I listened to a talk by Bob Whitehouse at FMBR, and he showed a picture of a Taurus. And that picture, and in that picture, I saw 369. And the Taurus is something that, uh, and the vortex is something that all of you know about because you belong to the Theos Theosophical Society. And I'll go to, through uh, and show you what all that means and what I just said. But self-sustained motion is possible through the stone shape. And you, it creates a vortex. And you see this vortex and the motion and the energies from this, virtually everything. And when I show you pictures of a person, etc. You'll, you'll see that, uh, but everything has a torus involved with it. Here's a connection to the Theosophical Society. So I, I'm presenting this because I thought that you'd be interested in seeing that because Charles Ledbetter and Annie Besant uh, were asked to uh, look at the hydrogen atom and uh, see what it is. And this is what they came up with, the Anu. And what is it? It's a counterclockwise and a clockwise vortex. And the vortex is the basis for creation. And you see this through the work of Walter Russell. And if you have not read about Walter Russell, that is almost an essential reading uh, to, to do. Um, he was a polymath. You see his paintings and his sculptures in Washington, D.C., everywhere. Uh, he, he was able to do many, many things. I, I consider him a polymath. And when he journeys out into the woods and would stay for many days. And on one of his journeys, he had an out-of-body experience. And in that experience, he says, God told him the nature of creation. And what he said, the nature of creation is simple. It's a vortex motion of light. And the vortex motion of light in in a centripetal motion, clockwise, results in creation of matter. And you have two lights. You call it a female light and a male light. 
we call it a blue light and a red light. And it's a motion in equilibrium that happens. They come together and there's dissipation of that motion. Uh, the, the creation motion is, the, uh, Walter talks about as gravitative or electric. Uh, and uh, the dissipation of it is also a motion and it's counterclockwise and it's centrifugal and it's called radiative, according to Walter Russell. So that, in a nutshell, in his various books, is the basis of creation per Walter Russell. And I think this has a lot of meaning. So when Bob Whitehouse in his lecture showed the torus, which are the two smaller circles and the energies uh, surrounding it, I said, okay, that's the 369. You see the three there, you see the six, and you see the nine. And I said, okay, I know biogeometry. Does that have any energy that I can detect, any subtle energies? No, it doesn't. Uh, so, but I knew that counter, that clockwise motion is creation. So I drew the six and the nine in one motion clockwise. I put arrows there. And that gave BG3 energy, the energy of harmony, the energy of centering. And when you have that structure on the left, you don't have to trace those circles. Uh, you can I show it where you start the clockwise motion and trace that circle to create the BG3. But all you have to do is draw an arrow, uh, as I've driven, done here, to show direction. And that gives the BG3 energy. And once you've done that, you can photocopy this as many times as you want, or scan it as many times as you want, and that structure now has BG3 energy. If you do it in a counterclockwise direction, uh, which is the decay side of thing, or entropy, uh, you have the counterclockwise motion of the pendulum. In the numbers 369, if you draw the numbers in the clockwise manner, it has the B has the BG3 energy. If you draw the numbers in a counterclockwise manner, it has uh, the negative uh, of BG3 or the counter of it, of it. And if you draw in different directions, you don't get anything. The universe in biogeometry, you learn that the universe looks at not necessarily uh, very big numbers, it looks at units. So if you draw dots or lines as units, three lines, six lines, and nine lines, it has BG3. You can't draw this thing in reverse or start in the middle, it won't have BG3. But if you put three lines, six lines, nine lines in that order, it'll have BG3 and it's reproducible and you can photocopy that. Then I looked at all the other uh, uh, energies of creation that people know about. People didn't know about the Taurus, but the yin-yang symbol is there. And the yin-yang is nothing but the Taurus. If you complete the circles on the two sides, you have the Taurus. But you also have the two spins, uh, clockwise and counterclockwise in the middle. So it's known as the harmonizing symbol, yin-yang. And in fact, it does harmonize things. And I'll show you that in a little while. But it has BG3. Okay, of all the ways to write, uh, 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 the, well, ohm is, people have been saying ohm for forever. And I found, I, I looked up ohm, and I looked up the Hindu Sanskrit version of Ohm, and that has BG3. But 
that ohm in Sanskrit is nothing more than 369, as shown here. Many of you may know more about Marco Rodin's work uh, on vortex math. And if you have nine, you put this into a circle, um, and you start doubling the numbers, you form uh, one plus one, one, uh, one uh, times, uh, one plus one is two, two times two is four, etc. You have, therefore, the structure that is there. That structure has BG3. Without putting the arrows, it, there's no BG3. And in the work of uh, Marco Rodin and uh, uh, Powell, I think it's David Powell, I'm trying to remember his name, but uh, uh, that work in doing the math of uh, the vortex math, in fact, does create a torus structure. Uh, the Bagua structure in Asia, the trigrams are associated also with the uh, creation. Okay, um, let's talk about measuring BG, measuring th uh, 369. 369 is a different energy than uh, BG3. The numbers often are the same, but there are two different things. One is creation, one's one comes from creation, and one comes from centering. And so I understood how to create a pendulum that would resonate with 369. So all I did was just, you use any of my, the, the symbols I had uh, and put it onto a pendulum, it'll have now 369 energies. The easiest to put on is three lines, six lines, and nine lines. And if you do that, anytime you have, you see this energy, it will resonate with it and it will go, the pendulums will go clockwise. So I have two different pendulums here with 369 on it. And I can do this, and I've done it with carbide pins on harder surfaces, and, and you may not see the carbide marks on it, but uh, it'll resonate. I just drew this with a pen so that you can see what I, I did. And uh, you get the clockwise motion whenever 369 energies are present. And you get the same things. You get environmental harmonization uh, because anytime there's BJ3, you'll also typically see the 369 energies that are there. So you'll pick up uh, these fields of, of BG3 with the 369 pendulums. But if you put an object that is uh, a tool, a pendant, a cube, or whatever, that is bow geometry in a 369 energy a symbol, uh, ohm structure, it'll nullify the two energies and you get no BG3 energies and no 369 energies from uh, either tool, either the symbols or, or the bow geometry. It nullifies it. Uh, we talked about vortexes and uh, Walter Russell and the, the vortex that is being created is a based upon the golden ratio, phi. So if you draw the, the, the uh, vortex with, based upon phi, if you trace the motion of lines of the vortex in the various octaves, uh, and you, you, uh, you trace those lines, those curved lines, those curved lines give you BG, gives you 369 energies. And they also give you BG3 energies. And it turns out that uh, if you look at the Schumann uh, frequencies, and Schumann frequencies are created by lightning and bouncing off the ionosphere, but these uh, frequencies are essential for our well-being. If you're, if you're an astronaut and you're off of Earth, uh, you'll get sick at some point in time because your body is missing these frequencies. So then nowadays they give these frequencies because they know that's a, that's what is needed. And if you plot these frequencies, um, you, know, you, do, you can do a 7.29 and you approximate 7.29 in terms of a length. You can have that length and plot these uh, four, these lengths together and you get, B, you get 369 energies. The uh, wavelength of, of the brain, the delta, theta, alpha, beta, um, they're not strictly on this uh, 
curve, but they're around these numbers in uh, about where I put them, you get uh, the state of bliss. Just interesting additional information showing that vortex and BG3 in creation in 369, there's, there are relationships. And here's the, the relationships. So we are based upon uh, the spiral structure. So spiral structure, you look at your ear, you look at the, uh, uh, the nautilus structure, you look at the human body and the ratios of different parts of the body, you look at your hand, the joints, uh, they're all based upon uh, the golden mean or in math, uh, Fibonacci uh, sequence. Okay, uh, other implications. Uh, we talked about our own vibrational nature and that uh, we are, uh, the, clock, uh, the pendulum goes clockwise with us when we test ourselves. And so our personal wavelength is that clockwise. And so if you're in resonance with something, it's clockwise. If you're not in resonance with anything, a food that's not good for you, it'll go counterclockwise. Uh, so that corresponds to entropy, uh, counterclockwise, things are breaking down. Neg entropy, things are creating, are being created clockwise. Um, and even our breaths are related to this. In breath is clockwise, out breath is counterclockwise. And so we have these two sets of information, torus 369, subtle energy measurement, uh, harmony or centering energies, BG3. Now let's jump to a, something a sort of more elementary in creation of matter. And these are the uh, plasma or fourth state of matter and often known as Ormus and Gans. And I found that all these materials have 369 energies associated with it. If researchers have been working in this field for many years and have never been able to measure the fields where this, these energies or these materials are located. They don't know about this discussion that I'm telling you about, uh, but these materials will create fields that have 369 energies. So if you know of anyone working with Ormus or Gans, let them know that they can create a pendulum that will detect the fields that are there and this will help accelerate the growth of this, I think, a very important field. And ORMAS just stands for Orbitally Rearranged Monatomic Elements, uh, or M state, and I'll tell you how it's made, and GAN stands for Gas in the Nanostate, and I uh, won't go through the history of it. David Hudson, cotton farmer, discovered it back in the 1970s. Marin Keshe, uh, the Keshe Foundation, has been a pioneer in the field of GANs, and has made it more popular. It's still on the fringe side of things, but that's because people don't understand what he uh, has. And on this slide, all I'm going to do is say uh, that there are three states of matter that people know about, solid, liquids, and gas. And as you get into the higher energy side and the nano GANs and plasma side, that is another state of matter. And don't bother reading about what's below there because I'll explain that because it'll just be more confusing to you. So I'll just, that's all I want to do in that slide to say that there's four states of matter. This is one I'll explain in more detail. Uh, imagine you have uh, a wire, a copper wire. And those are the blue lines at the very bottom of the slide. You have a copper wire. The copper wire does not have any BG3, has no 369 energies associated with it. You pass a flame over that wire and there's a black material that forms on top of the wire. And you can do this chemically too, and you'll have different ways of doing this. But with the flame, you get this black coating on it. 
And so people say, oh, that's just oxidation of copper. No. What you've done is you've created a nano coating, and that nano coating has the little balls of copper separated from each other. They're still associated electrostatically with the copper wire, so they haven't floated off yet. But it's there, and you, you have basically a superconductor because electrons can now flow through that uh, layer up there much more easily. But now the wire, or that coating, has 369 energies associated with it. Free that material from the surface, and you can use acids and alkali. And now you have a liquid material, and that will have the 369 energy, but not necessarily the BG3 energy. And that's what you call the gas in the nanostate. It's not really a gas in this case, but it's floating around there. So uh, Keshe said, okay, call it gas in the nanostate. Now let's talk a little bit about what these GANs in plasma and nanostate materials are. And let's put some disk magnets on a table and shuffle them around so that there are now, if you put two magnets go, they'll pull or attract. If you have a bunch of them, they'll sort of, as you sort of get them closer together, they'll rearrange themselves so that they are in, uh, in balance, that are in an arranged balanced manner. So they're not globbing onto each other or pushing each other apart. They're in this equilibrium state. And so you think about this as magnetic repulsion, gravitational attraction. That's basically what you have when you have GANs or nano. Look at matter in terms of vortex and look at it in terms of pulsing going out and coming in gravitation or gravitative. And Keshe calls this maggrav. That's what matter really is. You freed matter from the surface and now they're in a state that is repulsing, attracting each other. And so you have something called maggrav. Mm. So, that is matter, and that's, and you can use that to create fields. And disk magnets allow you to see this interaction uh, that is there. Ormus, by the way, is very easy to make. Anyone can make it. You buy some sea salt off of Amazon or anywhere else, put it into solution, bring the pH to 11, uh, make it alkaline, and you get this fluffy white cloud let the cloud settle and decant the water and you have ormus. And you know, get rid of most of the salt and you know, they've done things like the cat has lost a tail from, from an accident, put it on the tail, the cat grows back the, the tail. Uh, put it on foods uh, that are growing, you know, it grows oranges the size of grapefruit, etc. So much of the, in quotes, fringe side of people have been working in this area not knowing what they're doing and not understanding any of the stuff that I, I've just told you. Uh, but I think that this type of discussion will allow them to see and understand uh, much more of this field. Now comes an interesting area of creating fields with these materials. If you just have the vials, the, the rectangles are just vials of ormus. It's easy to make, I make it, no problem. Uh, just have them roll, it just has 369 energy. But put them into a structure, uh, three of them for a triangle, square, rectangle, circle. As long as you put it into something that's balanced, you'll find both BG3 and 369 energies that are there. So both BG3, BG3 wasn't there by the vials themselves, but now if you put them into an arrangement, they'll arrange whatever's inside there to create that balance, and therefore you have the BG3. You throw that balance out by putting it in a 
an odd number of, of disk as a magnet or odd number of vials, like uh, this, what's shown on, on the bottom left. And you don't have BG3 any longer. You put these vials at the corners of a room, suddenly the room uh, starts building up BG3 in the whole room, in the whole house. You counteract it by putting more uh, vials in and everything disappears. You don't get the balance that is there any longer. The beauty of magnets is that if you have magnets on a surface, you'll create the same fields as you did with the vials of Ormus, but it doesn't create the three-dimensional fields that are there. These fields I have of BG3 and 369 are actually three-dimensional. I didn't show it in my picture. They are three-dimensional. It goes above, uh, and sometimes they form patterns, and you learn all sorts of things. But with magnets, if you put a piece of paper between two disc magnets, so it's like two magnets there, um, somehow that creates that three-dimensional structure. You, you wouldn't think it would do that, but it does. And now the fields resembles that of the Ormus vials. It now forms three-dimensional fields. So it implies that MagGraph nature of GANs is in fact like a double torus uh, structure that is there. And uh, you can see that. And if you look at the work of Nassim Harriman and uh, the math of uh, Elizabeth Rauscher, you'll see that they talk about the double torus. And you'll see that in Foster Gamble's uh, things if you look at the Thrive uh, movies that he's created. So magnets and GANs have north-south or gravitational magnetic properties, or MagGrav. They range elements within them, uh, so it has this bag MagGrav nature. And that, I believe, is really the basis of creating the BG3 fields for this type of BG3 fields. Not necessarily the ones that biogeometry has, which is more centering, the center of things, which is a different way of looking at things, but they both create BG3 fields. And uh, I think I repeated this uh, already. And so really what Walter Russell ta is talking about makes a lot of sense. This is, these are vortexes. Creation is a vortex. And we are light. We are light beings. Or you'd say we're ether beings. Uh, if you talk about the ether, the zero point energy field, uh, which is, no, we'll go into that. Uh, but it's the torus structure or the vortex structure is, is key. And um, I had a friend put uh, a GAN, four GANs vials at the corner of a house to build up the BG3. And it did, it built up the BG3 to 3,200, which is a huge number uh, uh, in, within the house, uh, within weeks. But she planted her uh, GANs vials outside. And when they sprayed the house with guard to pesticides, the house was, came full of vertical negative green, which is very, very detrimental. In fact, uh, in the early days of radiesthesia, Chamri, uh, in their studies, uh, built huge amounts of vertical negative green, not knowing what it is. And one day his friend found him mummified and dead. Mm -hmm. So it's just like the, the aspects of radium and Madame Curie. These are energies that are very, very strong. Um, and so she had to clear the stuff out and remove the GANs and, and uh, be able to bring in the VG3. Clear that of a vertical negative green. Okay. Okay, now let's jump into the subject of uh, consciousness and uh, our innate abilities, which most people don't realize what they can really, really do, especially working with these uh, subtle energies. Let's see. <clears throat> Well, we know that uh, we can bless water, but uh, we don't know that we're really doing anything. We say the words, but 
water with water you can me actually measure the bg3 levels of it tap water re typically runs around 200 on this relative scale that uh, bio geometry uses and if you bless water just put your or just put your hands around water and hold it for a uh, a minute giving it loving thoughts um, the water will actually go up in terms of bg3 or harmony levels and the 369 levels are the same they'll go up to 1200 1200 and good spring water runs around that level also if you go to the store and buy the top quality spring water you can get it'll typically run around that that, that number <clears throat> Okay, let's see what happens when we mix a 369 tool, which is a 369 lines, with a biogeometry tool, which is this L90 structure. And when you put the two together, it nullifies the energies. You no longer de detect uh, 369 energies and biogeometry uh, BG3 energies. But if you give if you look at that structure of the L90 and the 369 lines and in your mind say harmonize, the BG3 energies and 369 energies come right back. So just with your intention and just with your thought, you've harmonized that energy. You can do it with a symbol also. You can have that symbol there and then drop in a uh, yin-yang symbol on top of that and the energies are harmonized. You've probably never experienced harmonizing anything with the yin-yang symbol, but they do. They have their purposes and there's a reason for that. And this example gives you that, that reason. <clears throat> now, um, let's create a field. Let's take four Ormus vials. These are the blue four Ormus vials that are there. And uh, there's no be uh, as soon as you put them into a square pattern or a rectangular pattern, now you have uh, uh, BG3 and 369 energies uh, there within the perimeter. And you can take that, you can mentally say, move the energy within that square to another location. And now you test for that, low, that energy between the vials. You test for either 369 or BG3 with either pendulum. And won't, you won't see that energy there, but you'll see that subtle energy wherever you placed it. Now I've done this with uh, friends living in different cities. Uh, and so one person would put, uh, in, would create maybe it's about geometry energy and place it on the wall somewhere, and the other person will find where on the wall that biogeometry is. So again, that says who you are. You can move these energies just with thought, and you can find it at another location a thousand miles away. It doesn't matter. Distance does not matter. Okay, let's do an experiment. And let's... Uh, structure some water or activate some water and see what happens. So if you have four vials of Ormus uh, in that green, and you see the energies within that green uh, uh, square, that, that has, the energy within that square has about 3,200 BG3 units or 369 units of energy. And let's move that energy over to that vial on the left for the test water. You just move it there into that uh, area uh, or into that rec rectangle that's there. And let's have a control water at another location. The energy now goes to zero in, in that green square and the energy is not quite as large in that smaller square. It only goes up to around 500. So it's, it's just a certain percentage of that. And why that's the case, I don't know. Uh, but now, if you start testing over time, the energies of activation of the water, what happens to that water, 
you find that after a certain number of hours, the energies of that water move up. So the BZ3 in that uh, rectangle is activating the water. And you do get uh, full activation with time. It just takes a long, longer period of time to do so. So you are having an effect. Um, you can arrange these biogeometry uh, tools in different ways also. And I, I'm showing this for another reason later on that uh, you can arrange this in a 369 pattern. And 369 is a magical pattern. Um, so you arrange three in the center, six surrounding, and nine surrounding that, ohms. And now that structure has 6,400 BG3 uh, units, which is a respectable amount of, of units of BG3. And if you now miniaturize that uh, structure uh, that's on the top and uh, put that into another 369 pattern, in essence making a 369 fractal, uh, you now have 17,500 BG3 units. So you, you increased it. Now you put uh, a vial of water uh, control not on one of these structures. Uh, and we're using the structure of the 369 ohm array of arrays, the fractal version of it, to see what happens with water placed on top of that. So you have the control which doesn't move up uh, in terms of energies. And you have the array of the array and the 369 and BG3 energies do move up. It starts at 200 for tap water. And within two and a half hours, it goes up to the level of spring water. 30 hours, it's up to around 3,000. Um, and I have a product called Dentiva and Solis uh, in one of my companies. And if I activate that with the 16 lines on it, it actually has some antiviral properties energetically, but it goes up to that same level, um, which is a very substantial level. And in 96 hours, it goes up to another very substantial level. So it has an effect. And you can move these energies and it doesn't have to be uh, from a vial. You can take a piece of paper, colored paper. You take that red paper that I had before and just take the subtle energies, not really necessarily the color red itself, but the subtle energy of that red paper and move it to another location. And you'll find that in the other location. You do it with the essential oil. And the essential oils typically, I think, have uh, infrared energies associated with it. And you can move that, and you'll find that energy wherever you, you moved it. So you, and then you do that all with a neutral pendulum. So it's fairly easy to do uh, once you learn a little bit of radiesthesia. Now comes another very interesting experiment. I'm taking that ohm array with 17,000 uh, units of BG3 uh, in it. Now, if typically with the Ormus, if I move the vials around, if, uh, you lose the energies on where you moved it, uh, the field goes away once you've done that. Um, so you have to leave those Ormus vials there. But if you take this, this type of a structure and you don't want to just move it because you want to Build to copy it to a number of different places. So you say, I per permanently copy this energy in this fractal uh, array to a piece of paper, to a piece, to a piece of wood, to a tile, to a CD. Now what happens? Well, you start testing those uh, wood, tile, CD, and the energy is there. And the energy stays there. Now, if you put a vial of water in all these, uh, on top of each of these, and let's see what happens to the water in terms of structuring uh, the water. Well, the wood and the CD and the paper and the stone, the tile, retain the energy throughout this, in this case, I was looking at for 42 hours, it retains that. And in terms of the CD, wood, paper, stone, the water becomes activated 
and uh, you see the activation in, in the water uh, that's shown here uh, in this table. So you've activated it 16 hours. It's like uh, uh, good spring water in 42 hours, you're at the 3,000. So that was enough to convince me of what was happening in this experiment. So all this says who we really are. Um, we're the observer that can allow things to happen. We can remote view, we can affect random new number generators and you can read all about the Princeton uh, engineering uh, anomalies uh, research labs results. You can bend spoons, uh, uh, you can move things around at a distance, you can heal at a distance, you can detect subtle energies, uh, you know what's good and bad for you, you detect entropy and neg entropy. And if you read about Cleve Baxter's work, you can communicate with plants and plants can communicate with you. So that's all part of who we really are. And we've talked about uh, harmonizing the BG3 tools and 369 symbols. We talked about copying and moving uh, energies and blessing waters and moving that and detecting these energies. But let's jump into who you are now a little bit more. And let's look at your own vibrational energy level and how to test for that. Use a personal wavelength technique. Determine your personal wavelength by neutral pendulum over the back of your hand and get the, uh, get the rotation of the uh, pendulum going clockwise. And it goes clockwise at a decent rate. Uh, but if you get into your I am state with affirmations, things will change. You can significantly increase that rate of rotation uh, of that pendulum. It'll rotate, rotate very rapidly as you state the, the affirmation and just stating those words does it um, and recognizing who you are and you continue being in that state and repeat the affirmations, the pendulum will then stop moving. It'll reach that center of stillness and you can do that within minutes and it proves to you who you are. Uh, so to do this and you can practice this at uh, home and, and with your neutral pendulum and if not don't if you read my first book it'll teach you how to make a neutral pendulum and it'll teach you how to uh, do these uh, things I'll just go over on a cursory basis because you probably want to ask a few questions and I got a few more slides to show you because I think that you'll be interested in the stuff I'm saying you can secure your resonance or harmonize yourself uh, in your brain and heart. And, uh, and when you do that, uh, uh, your pendulums work a lot better and, uh, and your rate of rotation can go a lot better. And if you state the affirmations, I'll teach you how to state a few affirmations. Um, and, uh, and you check your rotation and, your, and you, truly your pendulum goes crazy. It goes really rapidly uh, when you're at that state. And I won't go in about how do you do all the stuff in detail here. Uh, but you do reach the center of stillness. When you're truly at that center, the pendulum stops and you're in the state that you're of your uh, center of stillness. And in terms of affirmations, uh, I'll state a, a number of them. Some you may not like and some you might like. Uh, I'll state the ones that I like and some that I think are good. Uh, we are everything. Uh, we are our thoughts and we're connected. We are everything. So I say that I am everything I am and knowing and understanding that if you don't understand the statement, read the seeker and the teacher of light and this will become, this will make more sense to you. Um, and when you are there, the pendulum starts rotating. And you can test uh, the level of where you are uh, using these tools and using uh, uh, the techniques that are described in the book. Uh, rethinking is a very important word. And this is the one that uh, Joachim uses a lot when he's teaching affirmations. I'm rethinking, rethink I am. Rethinking is a magical word that 
has to be in your vocabulary. When you rethink about something, you spiral into the truth. So if you're rethinking, rethink I am, and you say this three, six, nine times, you spiral into who you are. And this will bring you into uh, the I am state. And your thoughts also. Uh, you think everything is solid, everything else is this way, but your thoughts and everything is thoughts. So if you invite, if I'm inviting thoughts within thoughts within thoughts to rethink with me, you say it three times, six, nine, nine times, uh, uh, and you'll also reach that state of, of uh, your I am essence. And uh, sometimes I just say, I am thoughts within thoughts within thoughts. <clears throat> and that alone will bring you into, that's so simple for me to state. And typically you state your full name at the end of, uh, of these uh, statements. Uh, uh, and that just locks you into your I am state. Uh, and I, we've talked about this. If you know how to do your personal wavelength, you know what's good for you, and you can you know, test sugars that are artificial and find that they're not so good for you. You look at foods, you know what are good for you, you know what's you don't have to worry about organic or non-organic, uh, and you just test. And these are way, great ways to do it. And uh, you can test EMF, test, test your cell phone. If I had more time, or if you want to ask me about cell phones and answer. Uh, if, portion of the talk I'll, I'll do so but whoops let's see let's talk about your essence a little bit and uh, we are not just matter and our bodies your your essence is i am and uh, everything is one and that's a hard concept for a lot of people to to grasp uh, and we are the thought creation of god and everything is god and therefore you are part of everything and the easy way to look at this is pretend that you're the wave in water and the ocean is God, the ocean is everything. But you are water and you're everything also. But you're the wave and think that you're independent of everything else and your ego says, oh, I'm the wave, I stand above everything else. But everything is water. And so you recognize that and that is, who you are, so you are, uh, you are that essence. And then I am itself has an interesting energy associated with it. You've put I am handwritten into a circle, it has 900 units of BG3. Put it into a square or a, a rectangle, it does not have that. And this all traced. If you uh, handwritten or if you print it, you trace the letters, that'll work also. But now, very interesting. You put that I am paper that you trace under a globe or a sphere of any size. Uh, and you can have something with a base on it and put it underneath. Now that sphere radiates I am energy that's at I find it was around 260,000 units of BG3 and 369. That's a huge amount. You take a picture of that, it'll have that energy associated with it. You can copy that energy and it'll have that energy associated with it. If you put three pieces of paper, with each piece of paper you put in, you have more of that BG3 or 369 energy. You go from with three uh, pieces of paper, you go up to about a million. I, I go up to about a million units of BG3 or 369. And I can take a foot, I put three pieces of paper under this globe, which has a little bit of indigo gravo on it, and it'll have a million units of 369 in, in it. And now, when you just put your hands over water, it has 1,200 units of BG3. But if you now take ownership of who you are and you state, I am blessing water, and you recognize who you are when you say, I am blessing water, now that water has a million units of BG3. Amazing. 
and you so you can copy this uh, I am energy into the water also. I've done that. And you'll have that million units of PG3. And if I ask a person to say, I am copying my I am energy onto a piece of paper, a test of paper, I typically get around 130,000 BG3 units because they're not at their I am level yet. This is their ego. It's still part of themselves is still uh, there. So they're not in quotes home. But if I have them state, I am rethinking, rethink I am, and state that three times, and then restate, I am copying my I am energy to this piece of paper. Then the piece of paper has a million units of BG3. But the paper and all of this is still basically your I am. So in terms of a useful tool, the moment you are out of your I am state, these energies from the picture, uh, from the piece of uh, the globe, everywhere else, disappears. It's no longer there. It's only when you're in I am state that it is there, because this is really you. And therefore, to do something, uh, and uh, so what I did is, I know that if I'm not home, if I'm thinking about another subject matter, I'm not home. Or if I just state, I am not home, then I am not home and I am not at uh, my I am essence at that point. And the energy goes away and you test that energy goes to zero. Uh, so that is, uh, so to make it a practical tool, I did something else instead of using the I am energy as a practical tool of, of, of uh, giving energy to something. You may be better off just using one of the symbols like the ohm symbols and I created something that you, you can use and I'll just show that to you because the energy just sort of goes away if you're not consciously at the I am state. Uh, and these energies can be used for any one of number of purposes. If you study biogeometry, you can do it. And I copied these energies to my to a wristband, tennis wristband for a wife. She had arthritis and her she couldn't move her a wrist and uh, the arthritis disappeared. No, the next day the arthritis isn't there. So you can do whatever you want to do. And I'm not saying that I'm not practicing medicine. I'm not saying this will work all the time or anything else of that nature. But it's something to play with and I'll let everyone play with it the way they want to play with it. And you can use it in many, many different ways, uh, but it's all up to you. It's nothing that I am preaching or doing anything. Uh, so we are creators, we create with our thoughts and create with our words. Everyone has free will. So as humanity and being a creator, think like a creator and think in with a sense of responsibility and create with harmony, balance and love. And I think that that is very important. So you are, am I, I am? Yes, I am. Now, I'm just going to do two, a couple more slides because I think that this will give you a tool to use uh, when you're trying to create, I am, create these energies. Um, all the creation energies, the symbols of creation, if you place them under a sphere, whatever happens, it magnifies the energies tremendously. The I am just, it just happens to magnify it to 250,000. The biogeometry items do not have this magnification. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the I am does, but you, it's hard to maintain it. And if you put things into a square or a triangle, it sort of isolate these energies and it doesn't work quite the same way. So you can't amplify things in that way. So it has to be freestanding. Biogeometry, those energies are there with or without the squares. So you can achieve any level of, bio, of uh, BG3 you want. So the ohm structure, I do the 369 ohm structure and I put 12 more ohms around that because we found that if you do that, uh, you see, this picture symbol does not interfere with the BG3 uh, energies. So a single, uh, and I call these SSAs, uh, spiritual ohm array. You 
you can put a single array there and uh, it has 3,900 units of BG3. This is all under the sphere. Uh, well, the first one was just the, by, by itself. Then uh, if you stack four of these pieces of paper together, you have 165 units without the sphere. Then if you put it under the sphere, it jumps to one of these units uh, will jump to 275,000 uh, BG3 units, two will jump to 575,000, three to 710,000, four to about a million uh, units. And I don't know if you ever need a million or anything of these high numbers, but uh, I just I just show you in, in information that is there. And you take a picture of the globe and the picture will have whatever the units are that you have created for it. So if it's uh, four, then you have a million and this picture will have a million units of, of uh, BG3 and 369 energies. Uh, and you, I, I did a little bio, uh, bio well experiment with it and I uh, decided to activate water. So I used the bio well, which is the electrophotonic imaging instrument uh, that gives electrical energy off to the water through an electrode. And here I show the instrument there. And then I look at the water, uh, you know, the first part of the curve is just a background. There's a drop in a picture of the a million units. Uh, the, and I show that line on the right hand side, this is through time. Then the, the energy causes it structuring and uh, you have this lower area that is there. So you see things happening based upon electronics. And so it's not just, oh, Jerry thinks so and he played with the pendulum you see something that is happening. And if you look at entropy, here's a part of the bio well looks at entropy. You see that uh, uh, the entry figure, entropy figure for the, uh, on the right goes down uh, versus the background. If, if you look at activity and environment, two different green colors, and this is a bio well that you can look at, you can look at energies and environments. And so you go from, a light green to a dark green, uh, which shows that it's now much lower in terms of that activity uh, level. It's more of a meditative state according to, to this. So with that, I think is the end. And let me stop sharing and hopefully you have a few questions uh, that uh, I've jumped in. I went through a lot of stuff and I apologize for that. But there's just a lot of information there. If I went through part of it, you'll only get a part of it. And then you'll say, what else is there? Uh, and since I, I'm not gonna be speaking to you again very often, I figured I'd just give you a lot of stuff. But it says who you are. And that's the key message. And you learn that through the subtle energy side of things. And I, I think that's an important, thing and knowing who you are is is amazing for you it changes you you are i am that's your essence mm. oh thank you so much jerry my goodness sir i see there's a couple questions in chat um should we begin with that sure After that, is fine. um not that I can pronounce all of this, but what is at the center of teradial or teradial vortices of, say, an atom or isotopic vector? <laughs> okay, if you look at the energies, well, even if you look at the atom of the, uh, of the GANS material, it's really a vortex and it's energy flowing in to the center. It's energy going, there's energy coming in, uh, let me take it out of uh, this mode here and uh, choose virtual background to none. Okay, uh, so my hands are talking, that's what you're talking about. And uh, so energies, energies are spiraling in and that's creation. And therefore, when you took a look at that Gans uh, figure of um, energy, it had arrows coming in and arrows going out. 
So it's vortex, really, vortexing in, vortexing out. If you took a look at Charles Ledbetter's Annie Besant's uh, image of the Anu, it's the same thing. It's the energy is going in. Uh, and uh, so everything says the same thing. And if you look at the people who are really in the forefront of quantum uh, physics, and again, not everyone is at the forefront. Uh, and I'm not necessarily saying I'm right about everything either. Uh, I'm just saying that if I read what I read and I see what I see, this is what I see. <laughs> so uh, I see the vortexes are there. I see the mass of Elizabeth Rauscher and Nassim Harriman. And if, you had, if you don't follow him, you should follow him. He's a, I think he's a wonderful quantum physicist and he's way ahead of the curve on, in, in terms of how things are versus how things are looked at by other quantum physicists. Uh, there's a whole spectrum of people out there. So there's, and there's ones at one extreme, others at another extreme. And I'm probably at one extreme and I'm not a quantum physicist. Uh, but uh, so you have the energy spiraling in and then you have the energy spiraling out. That's all, that's really what, what it says. And that forms things. And so when you form a human being, you have all the parts of your fingers looking at this part in relation to this part, in relation to this part. Uh, it's a Fibonacci, Fibonacci spiral. Mm. It's a mm. spiral. So it's the golden ratio spiral. It, it is. And you take a look at your ratios of your head, or your eyes. It's the same thing. You take a look at your eyes and the iris and it's the, it's the uh, sacred geometry, the spheres that you draw in that. You draw the vesica, and that's all. Everything is related, and so geometry, structures, everything is related. Motion is related, and we are light in motion. We call this uh, matter, and but everything is is that way. Um, Jerry, one person, Erica, has asked if you could repeat the name of the uh, person you said to that we should study or read? Is it oh, uh, Ibrahim Karim. Uh, if you look up biogeometry, that's the key area of, of, of uh, thought uh, in this whole uh, area of looking at energies. And the, there's uh, several good teachers uh, in the US. Uh, Robert Gilbert is a key teacher. He gives it on teaches the course also on Zoom. Uh, he gives about maybe once or twice a year. He's located in North Carolina. He's, he's an amazing guy. So Robert Gilbert, one guy. Doria Kareem is uh, the daughter of Ibrahim Kareem. And she teaches it and she's in Canada. And I believe she also probably teaches it on, uh, 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 on Zoom. And if you want to give FNBR credit, just say that uh, you heard about it through FNBR. They'll give us a little bit of credit for that, which is nice to have. But uh, there's uh, actually a video um, that we watched in our group on the um, with the daughter and the, the father that you're you're talking Ibrahim. about. Ibrahim is wonderful. Ibrahim, yeah. Um, ah. And so the the Asif, the uh, the Theosophical, the National Theosophical Society. If you Google that name, there's several, um, but it's on YouTube. So you can yeah. just Google his name on YouTube and come up. But we also watched it and discussed it the last year sometime. It's pretty fascinating um, material. Hmm. Uh, and Cody asks, how do you measure the three six nine BG three? Okay. <clears throat> I just use a pendulum, and this is a BG3 pendulum, and has 16 uh, lines on there. It's built into the pendulum, and it's also an emitter of BG3, so actually just moving around on a person emits BG3 to them. And all you do is, if this is you, and you just let it go to and fro, and it'll go clockwise, simply because that's who you are. Uh, uh, you are uh, a creation person, <laughs> created person, and you have BG3, 
And so this will just go automatically go, go clockwise over your hand. And it doesn't, you don't even have to look at the wavelength of it in this case. I could do it over here and it'll still go, uh, go, go clockwise because it's just in resonance with the energies of these three energies of, of BG3. It's all built into this one symbol. It's built into it because it has the 16 lines in it and has the structures that relate to that uh, energy. Very simple. And the nature of, of, of 369 is the same same thing. Here, I, I, I just, I don't, I probably just engraved it into this pen, little pendulum. And all I do is just uh, do the same thing and it'll go clockwise because uh, I have BG3. I, I have 369 energies in me, I'm created. And 369 is Fibonacci as well, right? No, 369 is uh, really the, um, it's a translation in my mind of the Taurus structure. Ah, uh, sure, it's sure. the creation of structure. And so I talk about 369 as part of creation. Um, again, that's something that I thought of and because I, I did all these testing and all the testing indicates that. Uh, and in the case of vortex, uh, nature of, of things, and same thing with the GANs and the vortex and the structures and all the ohm structures and the yin-yang structures, they're all creation symbols and they're there for a reason. And why is it 369? Why is it in resonance with 369? And if it's not, then it shouldn't be in resonance with it. Uh, they are. And it all adds up to that. It adds up, therefore, to who you are. It adds up to your I am. And if you channel uh, <clears throat> Yeshua, and there's a blue soul group <clears throat> who does the channeling of, of Christ, and what he teaches is, uh, is, is most teaching, the assist statement is, I am who I am. And that's what you should say. And Joaquin's teaching is I am, and I am saying I am in an affirmation that will state I am. Uh, all the affirmation, I'm rethinking, rethink I am. I am everything, I am. I am thoughts, I am. Everything relates to I am, and your energy just goes up as soon as you bring it to that state. It doesn't take, as long as you're aware of that, it happens and you can test that and, uh, and and all you do is just get get your personal wavelength you know go there and it's like uh, i am rethinking rethink i am i am thoughts within thoughts within thoughts i am i am thoughts within thoughts within thoughts i am i am everything i i am you know it'll, it'll just go i may be talking i may not be going as rapidly if i stay silent it'll go around really rapidly and then if you just stay in that uh, very rapid motion, everything stops. Then you're in the center of stillness. Mm. And uh, you can do that within minutes. So if you want, I meditate in the evening right before I go to sleep and I just bring myself to that state. Uh, uh, and I find that is a good way to, to do it. And I also state a few affirmations. There's affirmations in my book that are helping the, the planet. Uh, of um, you know, sort of entertain, maintain, sustain, uh, and support. I, I am uh, love, I am harmony, I am gratitude, etc., etc. And you state uh, the various things that you are, because you are everything, and you're, you, you, you are humility, you are divine light, you are divine uh, uh, life, uh, and you're, you're, you're everything. And, and there's a poem in the first book that has, that says it so beautifully. Uh, and it was channeled in through uh, uh, this, this lady. Uh, and there's a poem that, and she's passed away, but she channeled this information to my friend, Cindy Spring. And uh, that, in her, that poem is there. And she let me put that poem into the book that says who you really are. And uh, so 
there's just some amazing things that happen when you're working in this area. It's just, just amazing stuff. <clears throat> Any other questions? I know I threw a lot of stuff at you and I apologize for that. But I think that uh, you, you'll you get the benefit, benefit of it, hopefully. Yeah, Jerry, would you, I know the names of your books are in our materials, but could you, I don't know if you have the slide handy that you had or sure. just repeat them. Sure. I'll just show that first slide. Uh, that's an easy way to, to do it. I love your covers too, the design. <laughs> I'll tell you what that cover is. Uh, let me get uh, out of this. Uh, Press escape. Okay, whoops. Let me go uh, to the beginning slide. Actually, this slide here. So, science, subtle energy, and spirituality. And if you just, if you remember my name, Jerry Jen and JerryJen.com. Mm -hmm. So, my website is uh, is just JerryJen.com. HTTPS colon slash slash. You'll it'll have uh, this information. Uh, this book just got published in April. Uh, so, but it's out in Amazon. It's out in uh, bookshop.org, and it's out on Barnes and Noble. And this book has been out for one year. Uh, the Seeker and the Teacher of Light. This book really talks about who you are. Gives a little more of a background of myself and background of Joaquin, and goes through the uh, affirmations and everything else. Uh, really gets into the details of, of why you're not your body, uh, uh, not just your body. You are your body. You are everything. Uh, and the affirmations uh, are in the also in the website for free that you can download. Uh, and so even if you don't buy the book, if you just download the affirmations and how to use those affirmations, it teaches you how to secure your resonance. And that terminology secure resonance is to bring you into harmony so the pendulums really do work well and the pendulums really rotate uh, and the energies are flowing through your uh, body into your hands and uh, it gives you good accurate answers so it teaches you those aspects of it even in the uh, uh, website itself if you go into the affirmations part of it it teaches you Secure your resonance. Uh, so there's a section on that. That's useful. And I, I do, I didn't put it in here, but I do have a, a bunch of uh, YouTube and teaching you about uh, personal wavelength and things of that nature. I don't you know, have to put that into uh, I have slide. it in the links. I have it in the links already. The YouTube is in the links. Okay, you good. Guys look at them in the chat. There's, you can copy the links. Okay, that, that'll have some. And then also uh, you can do YouTube and just um, uh, search for your name too and they come up and I've been listening to them. Yeah. I recommend mm -hmm. all of it very much. And I've been reading your first book. I didn't know about your second book, but I'll get the second book too. Okay. I highly yeah. recommend the first one. Because, yeah. because this, I think that the information flows over us and you're, you don't have to apologize because we know this. You know, like you are telling us something that we know on a soul level already. But um, if you want to, if you're more intellectual and you want to digest this more, get his books because it's in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's well said. Thank you. Yeah. Jerry, do you think, you know, when, when we use I am with intention and that depth of that meaning, do you, when we're in daily conversation with the, and people say, I am angry, I am this, I am that. Do you, vibrationally, would you? You change yourself. As soon as you, what Kim talks about, as soon as you bring in anger, fear, any of these things, you take yourself out of the I am state. <clears throat> and you're no longer in that state. Uh, so just the choice of words that you use are very, very important. And uh, I have a, uh, in one of the YouTubes, I have a YouTube on Rethink. And it goes into the words uh, that, and the use of the word rethink, which is very, very underutilized. Because if you think in one direction, you always say, oh, I'm right, this is how I, I am. But if you rethink, you'll spiral into the truth. And so rethinking is important. 
and the choice of words are, are very important. And so the universe listens to you when you, whatever you say, it listens to you. So when you say, and look, this is from Joaquin, I thank you uh, so much. And he says, never say that because I only love you so much. It's limiting. So therefore you say, I thank you so very much. And not just say it on the limiting manner, because mm -hmm. he, he thinks about all these things all the time. And so he tests the words. And, he, and as soon as you state the words in the wrong way, it can give you, it can take you away from the I am state. It'll, it'll, it'll remove you from, from that higher state that you can be in. So words are very, very important. Yeah, so even when we're just half aware of saying I am whatever, you know, a sentence, we have to be much more mindful of that. Yeah, well, you that's your ego talk, but if you really want your I am talking, you really have to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, and that, and the intention, yeah. Even if you say I am happy, I am joyful, yeah. it, I mean, it carries a vibration, but it's, it does. but I, I guess I'm differentiating it from this intentional I am to daily talk, but we're also saying that's very significant as well. Right. You know, the daily. Very important. Words are so very important. Everything is thoughts. And if you start thinking about it that way and think about any ailments you have and how you amplify those elements and make it real by just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I, you, you, you make things real by creating it. It's all, everything is thoughts. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of, is that Edgar Casey or somebody, or I'm sure we've heard it in different ways. Thoughts are things. Is that, I mean, you know, thoughts are things. Thoughts. Yep. Very true. Yeah. Does anybody have a final question for Jerry? It's 9.09, .09, so we probably should sign off very soon, but I bet you there's a burning question out there. Well, read the book, correspond with me if you want. Uh, feel free to do it. It's okay. just Jerry at GenClan, uh, Jerry at yeah. JerryGen.com. It's in, in the, uh, if you go to the website, you'll be able to check in and, and okay. you'll have all that information there. Okay. I, I don't. I don't want to end on this necessarily, but I do have to just make a comment about the story about the guy that they found mummified. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that 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 to me gave me pause, and and I told myself, well, I I really want to learn this the correct way, because <laughs> obviously it's powerful, and so we don't want to yeah. be messing around with the stuff we don't understand it thoroughly, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. That that is true. Um, and in biogeometry, they only teach you uh, the horizontal, that, that you learn about the vertical energies, but they'll only let you play with the horizontal energies. Uh, and you almost never work with the vertical energies, which are the ones that are harmful for you. And the, harm, the most harmful is probably the vertical uh, negative green. And, but right, but that but that that happened inadvertently, right? When somebody sprayed pesticides yeah. on the house. So. Well, yeah. Well, vertical negative is around, but it's harmonized. If you have a pyramid structure, a perfect pyramid structure, the bottom of it will also have vertical negative green. But the makers of the of the Giza pyramids had an indentation on all sides of the pyramid. And that indentation negated the uh, vertical negative green. So learning about biogeometry teaches you about all this. So the people way back knew, understood all this stuff. And uh, the people in this generation are just starting to learn about uh, this stuff. But there's a lot of knowledge that's there and all this back then, I'm sure everyone knew about far enough back uh, 369 and everything else. Uh, uh, it's, it's not, everything is being relearned at this point in time for this era. Well, thank you for, for giving us a taste of, of um, what we're capable of doing on our own, especially the, 
the things that implicate that that impact our health and the health of the people around us and the plants and the animals and you know it just it just um it's very hopeful to me that we no. can do a lot of things naturally uh with our own god-given powers um and we don't have to necessarily always go the pharmaceutical route. <laughs> so, exactly right. So thank uh, you. <laughs> I am as key. <laughs> well, Jennifer, that was great that you brought that up because I did feel that sense of hope, you know, as we went um, through the presentation and just thinking of the future and all these things as they become more and more implemented and, you know, really offers us so much um, hope and, and uh, I guess, confidence, really, that we're I don't know. You know what I mean, I think. Yeah. We're able to utilize, we'll be utilizing these things more and more. Yeah. If you read or buy my book, uh, give a positive review, hopefully, uh, because no one really knows about the book except through you. I'm, I'm not really advertising or doing anything much uh, with regard to it, um, uh, but it's uh, sort of, I'm just letting word of mouth uh, spread the word. Okay, will do. And, and I'm looking Ooh. forward to it to your website looking at you know exploring your website so i think we could do a book study this is this would yeah. be a great uh, next book study right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well jerry thank you so much um it's 9 14 so i'm sure thank you so much for such an in-depth wonderful presentation and thank you very much you yeah, know, uh, it's my, my pleasure, and it's a pleasure meeting all of you. We'll see you at the ASD conference, yeah, Jerry. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, I'll see and you. Jenny and Jean. Okay. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye.